पादर मार्ग आर्जवाद इज द फोर्थ पादर द थर्ड पादर इज द आंसर दैट महर्षि रमणा की उस विच आई कॉल्ड माइंड ब्लोइंग इफ यू इंक्वायर व्हाट माइंड इज यू विल फाइंड दैट देयर इज नथिंग कॉल्ड माइंड यू एंड आई वुड से हाउ कैन दैट बी हाउ कैन माइंड बी अ मिथ इंटरेस्टिंगली देयर इज अ बुक माइंड इज अ मिथ देयर इज अ बुक कॉल्ड माइंड इज अ मिथ एंड इट इज बाय अनदर आइकोनोक्लास्टिक thinker who went couple of steps more than j krishna murti a man called u g krishna murti i don't know how many of you have heard about him u g krishna murti this u g krishna murti he is also no more now was some 20 years younger to j krishna murti and he had associated with j krishna murti attended many of j krishna murti's lectures too and eventually he had some kind of transformative experience while he was living in switzerland or somewhere with a european companion under her care he was conducting some kind of you know not conducting anything just observing anyway his story is fascinating but to make the long story short he was a terrific influence on lot of intellectuals in fact among his well known followers or admirers was a bollywood movie maker many of you know that name mahesh bhat mahesh bhat father of pooja bhat an actor he is a very well known movie maker producer director and so on in fact mahesh bhat moved closely with uji krishnamurthy was deeply touched by some of the you know very daring and very brave bold statements that ug krishnamurthy made and among the books that came out conversations with ug krishnamurthy there's a book by this title mind is a myth mind is not real mind is what they call a phantom figure mind looks so real so solid but if you are to inquire one sanskrit word for inquiry is margana margana has other synonyms in sanskrit itself you know uh, shodhana or anveshana anveshana is in some other indian languages too looking for you have lost a key let us say and you go to every room in your house did i drop the key here did i leave the key here looking for the key right likewise you could conduct an inquiry about the mind and again here too like in the earlier portion death of the mind we said actually means death of ego here too the inquiry is not so much about mind on the whole but about what is this ego what is the center in me which feels down at times which feels elated at other times when you and i on occasions feel like being on top of the world and on some other occasions we feel so low some other time we feel insecure so the related philosophy as expressed by ramana j krishna murthy vimla takar u g krishna murthy there is a galaxy of lofty thinkers nisargadatta maharaj who whose conversations were published as a great book i am that now we have a number of western uh, mahatmas holy men some of them are believed to be enlightened or some of them claim to be enlightened god knows who is is difficult to judge you have next week actually i am also participating in it not as a speaker but as a participant there's a conference called sand conference s a n d science and non duality so a friend in dallas two months back urged me swami ji you must participate in it he sponsored it also i thought he was also coming then he said i am not coming i am pushing you you go and participate i said all right so i am joining that it's going to be interesting there are people if you don't 
um, you know, if you may be, if you are interested, there's a person in San Diego called Francis Lucille. In fact, I am likely to meet him separately in San Diego briefly. We are working towards that. <coughs> and Francis Lucille, his guru was John Klein, who was a European but settled in Santa Barbara towards the end. Then there is a guy in England called Rupert Spira, S-P-I-R-A, look up. These people speak the same wisdom. And some of them are so steady, so, you know, in, so consistent and there is a lot of peace about them and no wonder a lot of people draw inspiration from them. In San Francisco Bay Area there is a man called Adya Shanti, a white man, Adya Shanti. He mainly drew inspiration from certain Buddhist sources but whatever he speaks also goes so much in line with the Advaita wisdom. All right, in what way do they say Daiva Manasam? There is no I at all. The I, I am afraid, I lost. What a fool I became. In this way you and I judge ourselves. We come to a conclusion. The philosophy here says, if you lost money, that is a fact. But in the light of your losing money, if you draw a conclusion, know that I don't have even enough money to you know, make my two ends meet. I am nowhere now. I am finished. Wait a minute. Which is this I you are talking of? You, because of certain false conditionings, because of some programming in the mind, not actually, not factually, because of certain programming, you have equated money with your self-worth. Your self-worth, not net worth or some other words, but self-worth. How good I am, how valuable I am, how worthy I am, actually has no link with the money that you have. The science is mind-blowing. It shows to us that your actual self-worth has nothing to do even with punya and papa. <coughs> Therefore, this wisdom, this Brahmajnana, is a cut above karma vibhaga. In karma vibhaga, which also may be called as dharma vibhaga, dharma vichara, karma vichara, karma kanda, karma and upasana kanda of Vedas, all of them endorse, approve, confirm, reinforce your individuality. You are a doer and you did these good things. In the light of these good things that you did, you are a punyatma, a meritorious person. But wait a minute, here is a list of the bad things you did. Therefore, you are a bad person. Papatma, you better go to Kashi and take a dip in Ganga to wash your sins. <laughs> this way it is stopped. So they endorse the sense of I. But then there is the higher wisdom, which is a cut above the lower wisdom. In the higher wisdom it is said, like Naiva Manasam, actually this I, this sense of I, put together by thought, put together by memories, and reinforced by various conditionings, various beliefs. An orthodox Hindu ordered bean burrito in, what is that Mexican show? Taco Bell, right? He went to Taco Bell and loudly and going by his narration, very clearly I said, give me bean burrito. But the man there over there at the counter heard it as beef burrito. And I believe, there was a case like this, I believe. And when this guy came to know that he took a little beef because of his conditionings, leave aside Vedic authority, you know, whether they are true or not, will that's another issue to be sorted out. But psychologically, moment he realized a little beef has gone in, he felt so sad about himself. Now what will free me from the sin 
this part, you know, and so on. Apart from it, he, I think, went for a lawsuit, etc. And he also made several trips to Kashi and again and again took bath in Ganga, you know. So, putting that example aside, this mind of ours, based on this act or that deed, this bank balance or that certificate, this trophy I got and that award I missed, on the basis of a hundred things, this mind of ours is very busy pigeonholing us, evaluating us. In fact, it doesn't spare us even in spirituality. If you go to Himalayas, sitting there in meditating, after ten minutes your mind says, you are not meditating well, you should not have come to Himalayas. After a couple of days, the mind would say, you know, so many people are coming to meet sadhus here, they all meet other meditators, nobody is coming to meet you. It labels. So this labeling process, this pigeonholing, this, uh, you know, evaluating, it's a mental process. There's nothing factual about it. Therefore, to give a general introduction to it, Maharshi Ramana is very powerful here. If you inquire, please take Manasa as mind to begin with, but mind in turn is essentially the ego. Ego is nothing but the summation of self-judgments. Summation. When you and I sit down and take stock of things, all right, somebody among us, let's say, I'm neither talking of me or any particular person, somebody 65 year old says, ah, tomorrow is my 65th birthday, let me take stock of my life. Where I have succeeded, where I have failed, let me make two lists. My marriage has been pretty good, plus points. But my relation with children is very strained. None of my three kids listens to me. They, they have tried to do the opposite, negative. Financially I am good, but some other way, you know, I am not good. Health-wise not good. So plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Then finally do a summation. And that summation may spoil your birthday next day. <laughs> if it is negative, next day on your 65th birthday you will go around with a long face. Friends will ask you, what's wrong? I did a self-analysis yesterday and finally I got minus 300 points. <laughs> that evaluation needs to be evaluated. That process has to be double-checked again. So, I am going out of my way to explain how the finance and the uh, hundred things outward are facts, but inwardly putting a label on ourselves, I am good, bad, etc., is questionable. That psychological domain is such a vast domain where you and I are not qualified actually. You and I are not, are, you and I are ill-equipped to come to a conclusion whether we are good or bad. In the case of so many eminent people, super achievers, you will read in their biographies. There was a time at the, in their life when they were thinking of committing suicide. And then by fluke somebody came and said, don't do that. And rest is history. Something happened, then they became super achievers. There are many such cases. You know. Later on, they in some interview they say, I was going to. I think one example I can immediately think of is you very fine. Uh, you know, Swami Chidananda cannot give you all the details. Swami Google Ananda can give you a lot of details. <laughs> that is no other than the author of Harry Potter. Uh, J.K. Rowling, yes. I believe in the life of J.K. Rowling, that lady in UK, at one point wanted to commit suicide because I think her marriage failed and something else went wrong and nobody wanted to publish her book. That's how many. Perhaps she didn't take to writing in the beginning. She was a small time writer <coughs> and she wanted to end her life. See, the I thought. 
I thought is a technical <coughs> word I am going to introduce. I hyphen thought. I thought is among number of thoughts you and I have a subset which describes us and evaluates us psychologically. If I am 5 feet 4 inches, if there is a thought I am 5 feet 4 inches, that is factual, that is not psychological. I write two sentences, I am 5 feet 4 inches, all others are taller, that is also factual. Third is, therefore I do not stand a chance to make, I cannot succeed in life. This is questionable, you know, this is psychological. To connect physical height with one's self-worth. The self-worth of a human being, once more, doesn't depend on height or bank balance or looks or color of skin or length of the nose, etc., etc. But the human mind, coming under some influences, comes to a conclusion and that is ego. Once more, when sometimes you think you are better than everybody else, that is one form of ego and at other times 